So here are some things that will impact your ability to qualify for buying a home and will make more paperwork, you know, required from you. Number one, large cash deposits. If you do large cash deposits, the lender has to back them out because we have no way to source where the cash came from. So definitely don't put cash in your account. If you wanna live on your cash on hand and minimize using your ATM account, that would be better because then your payroll deposits are going in and your bank account is increasing. Also, what can impact your qualifying is buying a new car. Don't buy a new car if you're trying to buy a house. If you are gonna buy a new car, check with your lender that if you do that, it won't impact your pre-approval status or your loan you know, commitment status. I would recommend not taking out any new debt. I actually had a client go buy furniture and it was expensive on a one year, same as cash payment deal. And that payment actually disqualified her from buying the home. Luckily, the parents came in, saved the day, gave her a gift of cash. We paid it off at closing, but try not to establish new debt during the home process, you know, when you're buying the house. Um, also, co-signing on any loans may also impact your ability to buy. Here's why. If you co-sign, let's say for a family member's car and they've only made two payments, I have to count that payment against you because we don't have a 12 month history. So if you can avoid co-signing for you know family members or friends, that would be great. Obviously, if you have a 12 month history in place already and you have 12 payments uh, that the person made, then we can use that and that debt will not count against you. Maxing out your credit cards, never a good idea when you're trying to buy a house to have high credit card debt because that increases your debt ratio. And don't forget about making a credit card or car payment. I know that sounds like, wow, I would never do that, but people do, it's, it's actually shocking. So any late payments in the past 12 months can really drop your credit score and impact your approval rating. Also overdrafts in your bank account. Sometimes I see people with two, three, four overdrafts if we see overdrafts and we're doing a government loan, for example, like FHA or VA, then it gets downgraded to like what's called a manual underwrite. There can be more overlays, more paperwork. So try not to have any overdrafts in your bank account. The best thing you can do is always keep a cushion. And then don't lie or omit anything on your loan application. For example, I had a client who was divorced who didn't tell me who was paying child support and alimony. Well, it comes up on public record that he's divorced. So we have to get the divorce decree. Once we got it, we see that debt. Omitting it or lying about it isn't going to help you get qualified because everything is public record. If you're on title to your parents' home, for example, you might say, well, that's not a big deal. I don't need to tell them about that. It is a big deal because you're on title. You're responsible for the taxes and insurance if anything goes wrong, you know, if your family member can't pay them. So make sure you're very transparent on all debt, anything you own, even if you're just on title, try to make sure your lender knows all of that information. Also, if you're gonna change jobs, I understand if you have a better opportunity, all we would need is an employment contract offer letter and making sure the terms are met, like if there's any drug test required or any screening required. If you've met that and you have the offer, then we can go ahead and close. But if you don't have all that in place and you're trying to change jobs, then that could impact your qualification. One thing you absolutely can't do is going from W-2 to self-employed and getting a normal loan. There are special bank statement loans that you can use that will have different terms, but if you're going from W-2 to self-employment, you will not get the normal Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or FHA back loans because they need a two-year history of self-employment to do that type of loan. And then final thing, if you change banks during the process, you can do it. It's not going to disqualify you from buying the home, but there's definitely gonna be a large paper trail. If you are taking money from a bank account you closed, we're gonna need all the paperwork showing you closed that account, moved it over, get the new bank account and get that paperwork. So try not to change banks if you can avoid it just for less paperwork for you. Remember, I'm here for all your mortgage needs. While I do renovation lending, I also do move in ready. So if you're unsure whether you wanna get a fixer upper or a move in ready, I can handle both. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more news, market updates, and opportunities to save money.